Coding update number five. Lots of progress happened, so let's quickly go through it. Um, I try not to go too deep because anybody who wants to go deeper just um, look at the pull request um, because all the code is in the pull request. Um, there was a lot of stuff um, happening. Um, I managed most of it already on Saturday, but then I had a pretty busy weekend, so I didn't do a video and um, now. I got the time um, to do some catch up. So let's go um, quickly through it. On the task to be done, what happened? As I said, the long bay bag I didn't touch yet. Um, one thing is I realized that with this um, splitting, since we uh, I used the token split, the um, already existing token split, this refunding of pending futures is already um, yeah, implemented and just um, reused there. And then what also happened is that I'm now locking all the things, the token balances, the collateral and the pool reserves, 90% um, of it is now locked. And I also created an RPC call to get the locked funds per address um, today. And now, yeah, that's, that's basically it. Um, one thing that I noticed that I added this fixes um, list here, um, yeah, it's still as mentioned um, last time that the EVM block hash is not matching. Um, yeah, that's still a topic. I don't know why, but I'm um, yeah just noted here that I have to or someone has to check it later on. And I realized that the amount minted misses the collateral values. So after the split, the minted amount of the tokens. So that's something to check. And also. Um, I doing that because when I found out that this is a topic, I also realized that it might also, or it likely also misses the EVM balances. And that is likely already the case on the current token split. So it's likely the case that we already have a bug in there. Um, that for, I mean, it's just for accounting uh, for the statistics. So no issue in the, yeah, in the day to day balance um, the, in the usage, but um, there might be a wrong number missing the EVM balances for NVIDIA after the split because that's, that's there. Um, yeah, would need to check somewhere, someone. Um, yeah, with that, let's, let's dive right in um, what, what I did, what changed. Um, on the one hand, I'm not sure if I already did that. I think I didn't do that in the last one. Um, but during this lock tokens of balances and collateral pool, so that's the um, method that I added. It's yeah in this process token lock. First we close all the loans, then we convert all loan tokens for the token lock. Um, so the tokens and pools are converted, and then we lock the tokens of lock tokens of balances, collateral and pools. And during that, I um, encountered for the um, uh, histories for the balance history. Um, entries. We need a reference um, transaction so that the history can say this is a history entry or a change, a balance change that's triggered by whatever and we do the token lock so that we really have the, the history correctly that shows okay those funds got taken from your address due to the token lock. Um, and yeah I'm not sure what because I'm Honestly, still a bit confused by this usage of characters and randomly spread around. Um, and I yeah, didn't find one that's free fast. So I was like, yeah, just <laughs> take 0x3 and that's it. Um, because I think 0x0, 0, 0x1 0, 0, and I thought 0x2 is also somewhere. Okay, maybe, maybe I missed it. Um, anyway, 0x3. It's likely free, um, but yeah, we in the review um, when this is going to be made production ready, there will be someone hopefully um, checking that, um, or they just don't use the whole code. But if the code is used, they will check that. And in the um, accounts um, header, the um, token locks user key, um, I changed that because I found out that um, we don't need the hate. Um, it's anyway um, the current state of the chain 
and we don't care what log what balance was at what height um, and because I used that when I took it from the future users futures use user value and there it was like um, this amount is locked in for this future block at this height so that you have the connection um, but with the token lock there is no reference to a height so it's just the owner um, I guess we could reuse some other lock some other key which is just the owner um, but yeah for now I just took that and that's that's it with the changes in the headers um, so let's look at the code that happened um, as I said this should lock all the stuff right now um, or if you look in here I have this locked amount which is currently yeah this is okay maybe let's add it to do here make user save save um, okay, relations. I know there is some library there that um, that does this uh, C amount multiply and divide stuff um, to make it safe that it's not no overflows and anything um, which we should likely use here and I hard coded um, the 90% uh, right now um, in the um, defib there is a definition that at a above a certain range or above a, above a certain price the um, the log ratio goes down a bit um, but for now I didn't change that um, it's anyway that we likely need to decide then how to activate this thing. Um, either right now it's done in a way that it's basically happening hard coded on the fork block of the of that fork and will just be triggered there with the numbers and everything if you want it um, with a parameter and um, to define that it should happen or not um, so that we can merge it into the code and then still decide if it should happen or not um, then we likely should do that with some governance attributes um, that sets the token lock block um, and token lock um, ratio and say okay add this block this ratio and then we move on or then we do it at this block like we do it with the token splits uh, which is just set in the attributes and then it's happening at this um, block but yeah right now this is in here it's a small lambda basically um, so it's uh, easily changeable and then um, we go in um, first again is for each lock token in pool to get all the tokens to be locked and all the affected pools um, then a bit of a uh, yeah vector to, uh, to use and going through all the balances um, from um, yeah, on the on the chain and I I noted that here I didn't I didn't do that yet um, but we likely for the also for the burn address I think we we should not lock tokens from the burn address because this for each balance really takes all the addresses everything um, and that includes the token, um, the, the burn address. And also before I first took all the stuff from the vaults and then there was already balances in the token lock address because I sent the funds to the token lock address um, and then um, yeah, have that there. So um, like we have it with the future swap, but yeah, then I lock tokens from the token lock address. Uh, so we lock them, which doesn't make sense. Um, and yeah, so this this needs to be um, ignored um, yet. And then I have this okay for all the balances. If this token um, should be locked, so it's in the tokens to be locked, and there is a balance, then calculate um, how much of it should be locked. The ninety percent, um, a lot of logging. And here is this history position. We say okay, history subview means something got removed from the address. And there's this token lock um, that's yeah removing the thing from the address. Um, exactly. And then the subview or that we say yes, this is a token lock, and then we subbalance um, this amount, um, flush the uh, history view, and lock the token. 
and this log token is again just a small helper function that takes the smart contract and creates this balance view for the uh, contract address that we say okay things went into the contract and um, get the and update the stuff so we send the uh, balance there and we update the account basically the account values in the in our uh, database um, so we store the lock token lock user values that we know that amount belongs to this user and then we move on we have the balances and afterwards we do the same for the pools now it's a bit more complicated because for the pools um, again amount to lock we have to just the pool balances the process because here we have this if the token should be locked lock it directly if the token if it the id is from an affected pool then save it to the token uh, pool balances to process and then we process that that we say okay remove that pool balance um get the pool lock the amount um or get the amount of lp tokens so the pool part to be locked remove that um from the sub balance yeah, we, we remove the, the token, um, uh, the, the LP tokens from the address because they are just gone then. They are not, yeah, yeah they are burned. Um, they are just reduced. Um, and we remove the funds from the, the reserve, the according reserve, we say amount locked times reserve divided by total liquidity. So that's your part that should be removed and locked. Um, that are removed from the pool and then we have the decision here if this token should be locked then this is directly locked away so it's not hitting your address but goes directly to the lock um, for you so um, for the owner and if it not should not be locked so in a gateway pool then the balance goes directly to your account and the other side too if the other is the token B um, should be locked then it moves over otherwise it goes to your account and then we update the pool pair that because we updated the balances and everything and the reserves this is something that you likely should um, do once so not um, to keep them in memory and update them afterwards um, to be a bit more performant but right now um, let's do it that way and then last step for each vault collateral go in check if this vault collateral should be locked in this case in our case we know it's just usd but this is the generic code on the on the chain so it's not should not have too much hard coded stuff in there um so to assume anything um so this is again amount to be locked um and just removing the collateral from the vault um one thing that i uh, uh yeah an error that I made in the in the first try where I because I assumed that this would remove it from the vault and put it into my account but this is just really those things are always just changing what it says it says sub subtract volatile a vault collateral so it removes collateral from the vault means afterwards the vault has less collateral and the funds are gone there are no errors because um, if you want to really um, withdraw it from the collateral from the vault to the address you need to subtract the collateral on the address and add it to the balances right um, so that's that's important here that's why i just subtract the collateral and directly say lock token which means i add the this token amount in the lock contract and everything um, but this is not moved from somewhere but basically created there because it's moving funds from one address to the other it's always like subtracting the balance on the one side and adding the balance on the other side. And in this case, we do exactly that. We subtract it directly from the vault collateral and add it in the token lock. And therefore, you can think about it as move it from the collateral directly to the lock. Um, but just um, keep in mind that this, uh, this method does nothing else, but we move it from the collateral and this does nothing else, then add it to the token lock. Exactly, and that's it. Then collaterals 
and um, balances and pool, uh, pools and balances are all um, yeah updated uh, or locked and then so that's this whole locking stuff and then what also happened is that in these rpc accounts i also added um, two new um, rpc methods and they are done like that i just basically copied over the code from the get pending future swaps um, and here we have the list locked tokens um, which just iterates for each token lock user values the thing that we did three videos ago i think or two um, iterating over all the keys so all the owners uh, lock user value um, going in and um, get the owner and then a list of values which is just the balances that i have in my lock values i have the balances and just yeah iterate over um iterate over them and put them into the um into the result and the second one that directly gives you the lock tokens for one address because this lists all lock tokens for everything um, for all accounts and this gives you the lock tokens for one address again just going in and here i now use the get token lock user value for exactly this key so not no for each but exactly that one again converting all the balances just to the strings and then um, reciting the rpc um, stuff and that's it that's basically everything um, here in the test case i added a bit of this mintable because that's how i found out when i added in the test case the how many tokens are minted for this address and then i realized that i um, missed the um, all the pools uh, all the balances that are in the pools um, to add it to the minting because previously that was done in the token split when the pools were split directly in the token split but as i said last time i think that i'm keeping the pools outside and then splitting them all at once um, because otherwise we do, would do that twice um, and so in the token split itself there is no pool with no new balance so um, he doesn't realize that there is balance um, missing and yeah i added that and then we i have here now the additional test or check that this list lock tokens um, returns you the amount of tokens i honestly didn't check if those values are correct yet um, i just wanted to see if this rpc provides data um, but that will be um, one of the next steps then um, but i think i will do that once all the paybacks and everything is also correct because then um, I can once go through and say, okay, that's my expected values. That's what I need to see there. And then we see um, what's going on. Exactly. Um, and yeah, we can run it. And we see that I think it fails somewhere here now. And yeah, that's, that's an additional thing um, because also yeah, it fails here on the on the vault because right now this is a minus one and honestly i'm not 100 percent sure why it could be because this token is automatically locked um, after um after uh, through the token split before the token split it gets automatically locked and i think it makes sense to keep it locked and it could be that because of that the collateral value has no value when the token is locked um, but i don't know honestly um, and it's a state is active so i'm not not 100 sure um, why this is there um, it opens but it opens one one topic and that's about the, the oracle and i think that's something that i need to add to the to-do list is about the um, the, the question how to deal with the US, DUSD oracle. Should we keep the oracle as a DUSD USDD uh, or DUSD USD? As you see here, the, uh, I just print the to loan token for the USDD. I didn't change the name yet, just the, the symbol and symbol key. And the question is because you have here in the fixed interval price ID, it's still the DUSD USD um, because yeah, it's just the old token renamed. And now the question is if 
we uh, or likely we should yeah um, add a new um, interval price there a fixed interval price id for usdd um, and add that to the list or replace that there in the renaming um, that we anyway do so that's that's likely um, one one next step um, but for that we also i also need to check if it, this is hard coded somewhere and if yes then um, yeah change the hard coding there that we also have the usdd but again future topics for now um, that's it for the summary today next steps um, as i said i think i will now um, do the payback um, because if we look back at our list um, that's one bigger thing but i already have a bit of an idea how to do that um, so there is i know which code to use and so on so i think i do that because yeah it's straightforward in my opinion and then this whole thing basically those two this how to define the release ratio and what to um, how to do this transaction to release a tranche um, because that needs a new transaction that goes onto the chain and everything um, yeah that will be a bit um, more of a topic and then also this handling of the continuous uh, the transfer domain later on um, when an old token is moved down to EVM that is automatically split and not just converted or anything. Um, exactly, so that's the plan. Do that where, where I have an idea and that is straightforward and then the things that I have no clue about yet. So with that, um, I hope someone is still watching that. Um, but yeah, anyway, I will continue doing that. Um, so far in regarding timing, it looks not so bad. Um, we're making pretty good progress, but yeah, we will see um, right now it's all more POC, a more uh, rough prototyping to get the thing together, have it functionally correct. And then I will see to make it, yeah, more stable, find the bugs on the EVM hash and everything. And there, maybe I need help from the core developers. But yeah, we will cross that bridge when we are there. So right now, full stream ahead, going on to the loan payback now. And we'll talk about that in the next video. So if you have questions, if you have comments, anything, as always, leave a comment. And see you in the next video.